Step one is going to be going to Tire Rack or some other similar website and finding some wheels that you really want to make. I picked these Enki RPF ones because, well, if you know, you know. Then I'm going to download a few reference images. An orthographic front view is a must, if at all possible, and an offset image just so you can get an idea for the depths of various geometries. With my wheel choice made and my images downloaded, I'm going to go to Add Image and I'm going to select Reference Type. And I'm just going to select those, add them in, and line them up. And the reason I'm using Reference Type instead of an image plane mesh or a background is because the reference images uh, type will basically keep the image visible no matter what view mode you're in. So while you're modeling, if you're in orthographic view, you can have your view in wire and you'll still see your reference images shaded, which is really nice because you don't have to do a bunch of switching back and forth with your images to be able to see the thing you're actually modeling. You can see here I'm putting in a cylinder and basically what I'm doing is I use the wheel measurements that I looked up and I'm going to use them to set that cylinder to be the same measurements as the wheel. And I'm not gonna actually use this to model the wheel, but I'm gonna push it off into the background and I'm gonna use it just to verify the fit of my model as I make it. So next, I wanna look at the shape of this wheel and determine, is this something we can break into simpler uh, base components that we could make out of primitives? And in this case, the answer to that is unfortunately no. This is a flow form wheel, which means it's a single solid piece of metal. So we're going to have to take a different approach. So I think by looking at this, I can tell the most complicated part is going to be the topology around the spokes, and I think also the topology in the center ring where the wheel lug holes are. So what I'm going to do is something that I like to call outlining. So I'm going to start by going to the Add menu and going to Add Mesh Single Vert. And if you don't see that option, it's because you need to enable the Mesh Extras add-on. So you go to the Add-on section and enable Mesh Extras. And if you don't see it in 4.2, you need to go to Extensions, search it, and install it, and then it should be enabled. So now with that single vert in edit mode and set to vertex select mode, I'm going to use E to extrude it and the X and Z buttons to basically lock it to those two axes so I'm not bringing it towards the camera or pushing it away from the camera accidentally. And I'm going to start basically drawing an outline around two of these openings where the spokes are. And while I'm doing this, I want to make sure that the verts I'm placing on one side of these are in roughly the same place as the mirror side of each of the holes. That way, you don't have odd numbers of vertices or vertices that are very far out of place on one side compared to the other. Now I'm going to put it into edge mode and use F to fill the edges between these to make one of the spokes. If you want to be faster and you have an even number of edges, you can grab both sides of that and use bridge edge loops and it'll basically fill all of the faces at once. But how do we make the rest of the wheel? Well, I've snapped my 3D cursor to the center of the wheel, and I've made sure to center all of my components on that same center. So now I'm going to set the transform position to be the 3D cursor rather than individual origins or the bounding box center. And what that's gonna do is let me rotate all of these objects around the cursor instead. Now we're going to duplicate this and rotate it by 60 degrees. Why 60? Well, there are six sets of spokes and 360 degrees in a circle. 360 divided by six is 60. We could just run that last operation a bunch of times and call it a day, but I wanna make sure these are symmetrical. So what I'm actually gonna do is go delete the edges of both of these and flip it so that I actually have essentially the exact same mesh for both of these parts. Then I'm gonna duplicate that and rotate it by 60 degrees six times, and that will give us the basis for our wheel mesh. Now I'm gonna work my way around the wheel and find the edge verts that don't overlap perfectly, grab both of them and use M to merge them at center. Now we have a nice base mesh and we can move on to modeling the rest of the rim. I'm gonna grab the edge of the wheel and extrude it outward using E. Now I'm gonna go up here and use the loop tool circle add-on to turn this into a perfect circle. This is another add-on that comes free with Blender. You should enable it. And I would even say macro some of these to your quick menu uh, favorites. I haven't set that up on this laptop yet, but I will probably do that soon. Now you can use extrude to start building out the rest of the shape of the wheel. And you can see here that I'm using this second reference that I have that's at a slight off angle instead of being orthographic to just sort of set the approximate depth of each of these extrusions so that I can get the general shape of the wheel. This is going to be a three quarters model, which means topology is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly dimensionally correct, but it'll be good enough to look photo real on most of my models. I'm going to grab that inner ring and use the loop tool circle thing to turn it into a circle again. And now we pretty much have the base mesh for what will become the rest of the wheel. So now before I add any solidity to these spokes, I'm going to do a little bit of bending on them because if you look at the reference image, the spokes aren't perfectly flat. They actually kind of pooch outward a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the faces around the center and I'm going to use the proportional editing tool to kind of bend those gently outward. I'm going to grab and extrude the edge rings around all those empty spaces using Option Shift Click to grab them and then E to extrude them. And now I have spokes with thickness. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. 
A tasteful thickness of it. Something wrong? Patrick? You're sweating. At this point, the wheel's really starting to come together, but something about the way the spokes looked was bothering me. So I looked closer at the reference, and I realized, in the reference, the spokes actually thin out a little bit towards the edge of the wheel, and mine don't. So I grabbed this outer edge, and I kept using proportional editing to kind of dial that thinness in and get it a little bit more faithful to the way it looks in the reference. With my spokes cleaned up and looking much closer to my reference, I went ahead and grabbed this inner ring and used extrusion to make it into the basis for the attachment area of the wheel. Then I added on a subdivision surface modifier. I noticed pretty quickly that my mesh looked kind of lumpy, and the reason for that is that the normals were flipped on some faces because we basically built the entire thing out of a single vert, so I used mesh normals recalculate outside to fix that. Now, I went through the menu to show you guys, but I would really recommend that you learn the hotkey, which is Shift N when you're in edit mode and you have faces selected. Now that my normals are corrected, I moved on to selecting those edge rings around the empty space again and using Control B to bevel them. And that's just gonna create some support loops so that we get a nice hard refined edge now that we have a subdivision modifier. Then I went in and I cleaned up some of this messy geometry around that center ring. I split off the center section so I can work on it as a separate object when it comes time to put the lug nut holes in. I went ahead and selected the edges where these transitions happen and used Control B to bevel them and add a little bit of support loops to harden that edge. I did the rest of the wheel, inserting edge loops using Control R or using Control B to bevel edges where I could. For the center section, I switched to object mode for that object and I deleted most of the ring except for one of the areas over one of the lug holes. Then I put in a couple loops and I formed the area around the lug hole into a rough circle. It didn't need to be perfect, I just wanted to see that what I was doing would work. Then I used loop tool circle to turn it into a perfect circle and I deleted the inner faces. Then I just used extrusion on the Y axis and scaling until I had the rest of the shape of the hole. I was patting myself on the back until I put it into top view and realized that something in there hadn't been straight and so as a result, none of my extrusions had been straight. Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? To fix this, I selected all of the edge rings and set my transform type to individual origins so that instead of transforming the whole thing at once, it would transform each edge ring as an individual piece. Then I scaled on the Y axis to zero, flattening them. With that piece corrected, I went ahead and duplicated it five times and rotated each by 72 degrees because five to 360 is 72. Then I used bridge to fill these areas in between and I put a few extra edge loops in so that the edge count matches the edge count of the actual wheel outside of it. I deleted the outer ring of faces and extruded out the new outer set of edges, then used loop tool circle to turn them into a perfect circle and lined up the resulting quads with the other set of quads on the wheel. Now this wasn't perfectly spaced before, so I used snapping to snap it to my cursor, which I have conveniently placed at the center of the wheel. So I know everything will rotate around the same point. Then I lined these up as best I could and used merging to go ahead and merge it into the original wheel. Now, if you did this perfectly, you could select all and use merge by distance, but I didn't. And uh, my laziness paradoxically often ends with me spending more time on something than if I had done it the right way in the first place. Anyway, I straightened and cleaned up the inner ring. Then I spent a little bit of time setting the origin of the wheel object to my 3D cursor and giving it a quick rotation to make sure that everything actually rotates and nothing is wonky. Then I grabbed the edge rings along the inside of the lug bolt holes and I beveled them just to put in a few support loops and harden those edges a bit. Finally, I grabbed these inner faces and I extruded the entire thing in to inset this and match the reference. I added a support loop to harden the edge on that new extrusion and then I grabbed all of these faces and scaled them on the Y to zero just to be sure that this face plate was completely flat, which it turns out it wasn't, so I'm glad I did that. I extruded the inner ring and I took a little bit of time to go into top view and just align these bolt holes so that everything is about the right depth. Now it's time to make the other side of the rim. Should we start from scratch? Hell no, we're lazy on this channel. So we're gonna select the outer edge, duplicate it, and scale it on the Y by negative one. And that's basically going to mirror it for us. Then I'm going to bring that reference that I made much earlier for scale in and just align it so that I know that it's about the right width. Then I'm gonna grab these two edge loops and use bridge edge loops to fill between them. Then I'm gonna put a few loops in and I'm gonna start modeling out the rough shape of the inner part of the wheel. Lastly, I'm going to use I to inset these faces and then use the loop tool circle feature again to turn them into a circle and extrude them down to make the valve stem hole. I'm going to go ahead and use bevel on this one as well to just put some support loops in and make sure the edges where the transitions are in this shape are nice and sharp. 
Now it's time to move on to making the tires. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take a plane and use the tire as a guide for width, and then I'm going to extrude one of the edges downwards so that I have this on its side L shape, with the bottom part of the L being basically at the edge of the wheel. And what this is going to become is basically a slice of the tire. And the reason we're doing that is so we can take this slice and use array and curve modifiers to basically bend it around a circle to make our wheel in a non-destructive way that means we don't have to model a ton of detail into a ton of places, but rather we can make just the tread in one small part and have it duplicated for us. To make the tread, I'm going to take the L shape and I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. And then I'm going to add some bevels in to just sort of round it off, because if you look at the sidewall of a tire, it's actually not completely flat. It's sort of round at the edges. I'm going to add a couple cuts and bevels in here and extrude them downward. And those are just going to be for those main grooves that you can see in uh, basically every tire um, that run the length of the tire rather than the grooves that are kind of cross cut into the side. For the cross cuts, I'm going to add a cube, and I'm going to basically just use extrusions and bevels to kind of form it into the shape of the cross cuts that I have on those reference tires that you see off to the side. I'll put an image of that up right here right now. And I'm just going to use the spin tool, uh, which is quite cool, and basically spins uh, anything you select around where the 3D cursor is, and the bevel tool to make this kind of nice rounded curved edge thing, which matches pretty closely to the reference I have. I'm going to add a Boolean modifier to my tire section and use the object I created as my crosscut object as the Boolean object. And I'm just going to set the type to difference and apply it. In this case, it didn't cut a completely perfect hole. Instead, it left some edges behind and it didn't actually punch those faces out. So I'm going to take those faces, extrude them downward, and I'm just going to clean up any resulting leftover geometry like these faces here and these little doubled edges and stuff. And then we're going to move on and do some a little bit more careful retopology. I'm going to use bevel again to put in more support loops around here and clean up any resulting overlaps from that. I'm also going to run clean up and split concave faces just to get a few extra triangles in here. I'm going to clean those up at a later stage, but it's nice to kind of see where the mesh might need additional cleanup work. I'm also going to change the scale here uh, because it wasn't quite to my liking. I'm going to just extrude this bottom edge because if you look at actual tires, they have a little bit of a lip where they sit right on the rim and we want to make sure we replicate that. Then I'm going to add a circular curve object and I'm going to rotate it so that it matches the direction of the wheel. And we're going to use that as our curve object for the array. Now I'm going to add an array modifier and move it above that edge split that I have just to sharpen edges and a curve modifier and move it below the array but above the edge split. And we're going to set the uh, curve object to the curve that we just created. If your array is sideways or doesn't look right, you should take a look at the settings for the array and make sure that you have it set to an axis that works. Mine is set to X and that's working because of the way I have things set up. But if it's not working for you, you should try the other axes. Now I'm going to add a mirror modifier and I'm going to put it at the top of the stack and set it to Y. And I'm going to enable clipping in a little bit. I'm also going to move these around a little bit so that we have uh, basically two little trenches here. Extrude this up and extrude it out. And with clipping set, those two will join into each other. I'm also going to add a couple more bevels in here and snug this up to the tire, just so we have a little bit more control over this and it looks nice and rounded. And now we have an actual section of tire. It's not totally perfect though, but if you see if I increase the array count, it goes around and it becomes basically a tire. You're also going to want to set merge to be on on the array so that the edges of each of your discrete arrayed objects get joined. Now I'm going to take another pass through this and basically do a bunch of geometry cleanup. I'm going to put in edges, try and make as much of it into quads as I possibly can. And then I'm going to take one more pass through at the end here, which you'll see in a minute, and basically try and straighten all of these edges. And the point of that is just so that if you think about the way the array works, it's taking one copy of the object, making another copy and putting it in front of it. And then it merges the vertices where those two edges meet. So if the edges of your object are not flowing in a completely straight line in the direction that you're arraying, the vertices from one end won't match up with the vertices of the other end and they won't join properly. And we want to fix that. So first, I'm going to try and just make things into all quad. And then I'm going to go back through and basically straighten every single one of these loops that I've put in by just selecting the whole loop and scaling it to zero on the axis that it's on. In this case, it's laid out on the X axis. Now we've got a nice usable tire model, and if you look here, it bends perfectly around the curve. One last thing to note, 
if your tire model is still looking kind of chunky or angular, even though you have everything set up well and it seems to look right, increase the resolution of the curve itself. Uh, it's likely that your tire actually does have enough divisions, but the curve that you're wrapping it around is actually low resolution and you're seeing that reflected in how the array gets bent. Now it's time for materials and I'm gonna keep this really simple. I'm just gonna use a simple principled BSDF setup on the rim itself. Uh, maybe throw a little bit of metallic in there, drop the roughness a bit just to make it look like black paint. I might come back in here and throw a, a little bit of a roughness map on it to make it look a little bit less perfect. For the rubber, it's the same deal, just another principled setup. And I'm going to uh, change the index of refraction on that one to match the index of refraction here that I have listed for rubber. Before I move on to UVing the tire, I have to apply the modifier stack on it so that I have actual geometry to work with when I'm doing the UVs. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put some seams in uh, around the rings and one across the edge to split the main part of the tire. That way we have two basically ring type layouts for the UVs. I'm gonna overlap them and one big strip that's the main part of the tire. I'm going to add a bump map and a texture setup, and I'm gonna use this really cool bump texture that I found in a Blender Artist thread, and I'm gonna link that thread in the description of this video. And I'm gonna basically just assign that as the height for the bump map, and I'm gonna turn off repeating and set the data type to non-color data so that it can read as a bump map. And it's pretty good already, but it's not perfect because there's a little artifacting from the image being a little bit lower resolution. So I'm just gonna throw a color ramp in there and squeeze it a little bit to kind of trim those artifacts out and make it a little bit sharper. And we have our final result. Here it is. If you like this and you found it helpful, make sure to throw a like and a comment on the video. And when you subscribe, don't forget to ring the bell so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you stuck around this long, here's a little bit of a treat for you. Um, I'm gonna upload this asset and give it away for free. And there's going to be a link to that in the description. It'll be on Gumroad. You can just download it there and do whatever you want with it. That's it for this one. And for those of you who are cool enough to stick around for the end, remember, never stop learning.